All right, it's uh, coming up on 4th of July weekend, which means uh, from the June 30th to July 7th, we'll be working. And by working, I mean going, uh, I can't do one more day. I've been out of town for uh, like five or eight days. I don't know. You start. You catch me up on what I missed. What you've been doing? (laughs) <laughs> no, no, you start what you've been doing while I was in L.A. You've been here. Baseball. We had baseball on Sunday, yeah. and uh, I thought we did all right. We held our own. Yeah, we uh, had it. We had a without we, you. We had a. We had a. F- the numbers were few, but the heckles were strong. It was good. Good. I we heard. got a, and we got a bigger nod from the team this week oh, than yeah. we have That's previously. Good. That's yeah, yeah. important. And that was uh, the week prior to Fourth of July weekend. Yeah, the uh, doubleheader. Yeah, we're on coming the into the doubleheader. Yeah. I get. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have to go through all the shit that's gonna happen this weekend. But last weekend, you said Tracy had the heckle. Well, it was a. It was a Tracy's was a tag onto uh, Chad's heckle, which they uh, they. What They're happened the was comedy team on, with Tracy yes. and Chad now. Yeah, yeah. We, we work together. So what happened was is on Saturday night. The Saguaros were playing the the Trinidad triggers, Trinidad Trinidad triggers, triggers. The, in the, Tucson. The backstory of that, and I'm glad I wasn't here, is Trinidad, Colorado, is the the capital of sex changes in the U.S. <gasps> so the the fact that they call themselves the Triggers, <laughs> we they removed Triggers in Trinidad. <laughs> like I I would have I would have gone there after the fifth inning. Yeah, none, none of us knew that, so there was none of those. Heckles. I wish I didn't know it now. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, they played on Saturday night, and at about uh, eleven forty-five or twelve fifty, some they had to call was, the game at the. Well, they called the game because the fucking lights went out. They waited twenty-five minutes for the lights to come on. Then the sprinklers went on, and then they said, "You know, we're gonna we'll finish this game." That Sunday. game was up in Tucson because yes. the, the t- team comes down on Sundays to play their their one game in Bisbee, out of respect to the killer termites. <laughs> uh, so they had to resume the game to start on Sunday in Bisbee after the. So, but, but they started at the regular time, so it's one o'clock <laughs> and it's play ball, but it's like inning thirteen or something. And as it turns out, uh, we we won in the fifteenth inning. And there was there was controversy and stuff like that. But anyway, it took a long time. And the umps left the field, and they were gone for 30, 40 minutes. And we were sitting in the stands. No PA, so no one knows what's going on. Yeah. And there finally... Was, there were people leaving after the first uh, game was over, thinking the game was over in the first 15 minutes. <laughs> they were headed out because there's no PA. Yeah, because so the, they're doing their real game afterwards. Yeah. They had to yeah. finish up last night's game from Tucson. So at some point, Chad says, "Oh, I don't remember. Oh, yeah, they, well, that was when the umps were missing." And I said, uh, "Hey, can we uh, hurry it up? Some of us have got hemorrhoids up here." And, and uh, Tracy chimes in, "Some of us just got them." <laughs> <laughs> it, it, they, they cut it down to seven innings, and it was still a long fucking day because it was yeah, well, two hours late to start. The July third. Which has been named, if you have not seen it on Twitter, I retweeted it, and I'll retweet it again. We uh, got uh, were officially named, uh, uh, July 3rd is officially Bisbee Killer Termites Day, or just Killer Termites Day. And this is what happened at City Council uh, last uh, session, where... Uh, July 3rd was officially named Killer Termites Day for you making Bisbee the number one small historic town in America. Let's play a clip. Next, we have a proclamation for the Killer Termites Day. And what this is is a group that helped organize the vote for the uh, best historic small town, and I will read that, uh, read this proclamation, another strange name, so I prefaced it with what that group was. Whereas the uh, killer termites lead the charge to ensure Bisbee, Arizona is named the best historic small town in America by USA Today, and whereas the killer termites who were instrumental in spreading the word to over 250,000 social media subscribers 
and getting them to vote for our Bisbee. And whereas in paying tribute to killer termites, we would declare Sunday, July the 3rd, 2016, to be Killer Termites Day in Bisbee, Arizona. <laughs> And I believe that's the end of our various announcements. And next we are going to go to talk to the public. And that was our uh, outgoing mayor uh, announcing Killer Termites Day. Congratulations, you. You who voted. Thank you. See? You I ain't never won nothing in my life. <laughs> well, now you did. Mm. You are part of a team, a winning team, like Iceland beating yeah. England. Yeah. The so greatest day in <laughs> Scottish football history. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I should announce that Chad Shank is obviously here. Brian Hennigan is here. Chaley is here. Mishka, Bingo, and Tracy, Joby are all might be coming in and out because uh, yeah, it's a it's a big big weekend here for us. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, you hear this in time to come down for the baseball doubleheader Sunday, July third, Killer Termites Day at the ballpark. Uh, and the the book signing. Oh, I'm doing a book signing. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess we we should start chronologically with the weekend coming. All right, up. this is what's coming yeah. up because this will come out on no this whatever. Is, this will go out uh, Thursday. Also, Thursday. I'm curious because I have no idea what you, what's going on. <laughs> this is on. like a meeting. <laughs> yeah, this is this is a <laughs> July Fourth weekend. It starts on Friday the first. Yes, and uh, we're doing a, a book signing here locally, which will be very awkward for me. But Brett Erickson will be here, and Mishka's here, so they'll do the Q and A on stage. And but it's the three of you. Yeah, the yeah. three of us will be on stage. No, it's not. We're not performing. No, we're fucking off. And signing books and doing Q&A and stuff. We'll make it weird. We have to make it weird. That's Friday. Saturday. Six, Friday at 6 o'clock is, is doors. 7 o'clock 7 o'clock is the show. Mm -hmm. Then Saturday, the Beckers show up. Matt Becker, the fucking legend, and Becky Becker, the other legend who will pick at my back. Periscope. Yeah. Uh, ah. so, Worst uh, periscope ever. <laughs> then we'll get even more fucked up. Then Sunday, double header at the ballpark. and Starting uh, at one, same time, and seven innings each game. And I, I don't know what the break is in between. I don't know. We're, we're going to show up a little late for the first and hope for a blowout early in the second so we can leave. Because two games is too much. It's but, Roswell. Because we're going to do... We have a little private uh, uh, show going on. S Wait, is that... Am I... Yep. Sunday. Yeah, yeah Sunday, Sunday here in the Fun House with comedians and uh, people and all sorts of... Uh, uh, Mishka, music. Magic? I, I heard magic. When does magic that's, come that's in? That's Monday. Oh, okay. okay. So now we get really fucked up more so on Sunday. And then we're all checking into rehab. Monday the 4th, I believe there's more baseball. And No? No baseball? No. Oh, thank God. It's at Kino. It's in the, right. Tucson's right. home, go, home. If you're in Tucson, Tucson, go see the yeah. uh, Bisbee Killer Fireworks Termites. Fireworks explain everything afterwards. That's right. not here. Then uh, we've already uh, we explained the magic off, right? On the last uh, podcast. Have we explained we have the way it's going to... We magicians. Yeah. I, I, and I think, Bingo, are you playing... With your band on Monday, the 4th of July? All right. So Bingo's playing at the house. Then we're going to have this uh, uh, Bisbee's top magician with Matt Becker versus Kenny Bang Bang versus Christine Levine's The unknown, Warlock. The Warlock. Who is Justin Haynes? Oh, who Brian is, knows some, yeah. some yeah. backstory. So Joe Rogan's go-to archery guy is this <laughs> legend called Cameron Haynes. And his brother is Christine Levine's squeeze. Who is a magician. Yeah. Oh. Known as the world. Cameron Haynes was on Rogan's podcast yeah. today. Yeah. Today? He's, yeah. An, he's enormous, like yeah. in the world of archery. And... uh yeah, and the analogy the, would be well. The, well, it's not really an analogy. It's more of a as you'd expect. The Haynes we have isn't quite up to that. He's the BB gun <laughs> champion of 
You know, Willow Creek. We, yeah, we have the fruit of the loom of Haynes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have the Haynes that likes being crushed by Christine Levine. Well, Becker Becker knows who he's who he's up against at least in name and then internet searches. So mm-hmm. he's he's uh he's coming prepared. We're, we're gonna have to be awake for that. I hate magic, but if if we're pitting Becker against someone, oh, all of a sudden, oh, yeah. I get a it dog in this fight. Yeah. Justin Haynes is no, you know, he's he's no, we a got consultant to the magic yeah. castle and all sorts of shit. He's, you know, he's he's a pretty serious magician. All right, we'll see. So Kenny Bang Bang. I don't says know too. why he lives in Christine's garage. <laughs> 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 he's esoteric. <laughs> And then uh, my idea for him, because I've known about him for a while, and he, he, so he's, is that he's, I don't think this would be a great stage show, is the reluctant magician, someone who just performs tricks as if they're, you know, they really don't want, as if they're in a closing down subway shop. <laughs> like a psychic who doesn't want to be burdened with yeah. this gift. <laughs> ah, shit, you're going to die in a bus. Accident. Exactly. Why do I have to know? Yeah, pick a card or whatever. <laughs> or don't. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Pick a card. Who cares? <laughs> so that's uh that's Monday. That's, yeah, that's our weekend. That's our fourth of July. Oh, there will be a parade, I guess, down Yeah, there's a parade. There's all sorts that, of dumb shit that I haven't every, seen anything. There'll be a parade a parade of shame. <laughs> the mucking contest and old there's all sorts of shit. If you want to know the Bisbee shit that goes on all the time, Google it. Mm-hmm. That's our shit that's going on. Uh so the ball. What else did I miss? I, I evidently last night I missed some fun that you. Oh, I don't even know. I was here and I what? heard today, and it was like, no, we'll save it for the air. What? The tender and lovable Jenny, M- Mrs. Shank. Oh yeah. Evidently, get a little bit. Uh, well, she doesn't drink, so she had a two or three drinks here. Oh. And, uh, I was ready. Let to- me guess. Tracy was pouring. No, Jovi was pouring. Oh. And uh, she told him light, but she whispered to me when she was already hammered, Jovi doesn't pour light. And so I was like, oh, fuck, I got to get her out of here. I went outside to take she's, a piss. She's three foot nine and 60 <laughs> she's, pounds. She's five foot, 115 pounds. She's Filipino. Let's just she's, she's, call it uh, even. Wait, hold on. I forget what it is. It's not Filipino. Oh, Ty. <laughs> I was trying to correct you, but I don't know what it Thank is. Thank you, Tracy. If you could write some more Facts down for uh, Chad. They might have an anniversary for coming up. Keeping track of stuff for us, Tracy. <laughs> so I went outside to take a leak while she was standing there at the bar, and Tracy started talking to her very innocuously, and uh, she found it hilarious to the point that she could no longer stand up and just <laughs> fell down in a fucking laughing heap, which has happened on the previous three occasions when I've gotten her drunk. <laughs> so I know what it's at like. It's a laughing heap. Oh, it was cute. It was, yeah, it was like a bunch of bunnies. I, I, I was kind of an asshole about it, and then she got mad and turned into fucking screaming at me in the street. What? But, yeah. After, oh, wait, who was telling after you me left that? Here? That was Mishka. Hey, jump yeah. over here there. No shoes. It I was, came back from was, L.A., and I see, I come back to Mishka and Bingo wearing matching cut-off denim shorts. I don't like it. <laughs> Pull that mic. Yeah. yeah. There you go. If you had stayed any longer, we we would have each just had one leg. <laughs> the, uh, no, it was. Uh, it's. Well, I mean, it, it, she was carried out of here in a well, giggling fit, like she was going into a, a, a like a like a she, paddy wagon. Or she something. was so floppy that it, like Chad couldn't even do that, like a fireman's carry with her. We were gonna like, you know, he was gonna get the ankles and I was gonna get the wrists, yeah. like just carrying like a human hammock. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. she she came back to life. <laughs> she when sure I, did. <laughs> when I when I started being an asshole, she came back to life because we're <laughs> making it up to the gate, and like she goes, "I can walk," and I remember saying, uh, "I fucking know you can walk. That's why I'm pissed off because you haven't attempted it yet." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, which was a fucking dick thing to say. I now know she wasn't hurting anything. She's falling down laughing. That's probably the best thing a drunk person could possibly yeah. do. And uh, she wasn't. I was a she wasn't violent, it. Chad. Well, Chad. You know, I only. <laughs> Chad. I don't speak a lot of languages, Mishka. <laughs> you speak Oriental. I speak violence. <laughs> so yeah, she was screaming at me in the street that. She, 
Well, I couldn't fucking stand up at the moment. Can you understand that? Like, now she's fine standing up, and now she's eight feet tall screaming at me. It's, it's funny because when you meet Chad, you're like, who can handle a huge, violent psychopath like this? And then you meet Jenny, and you're like, oh. All right. Oh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's like some fairy wood nymph fly, <laughs> flying around Chad Chang. The, the puppet master. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I miss all the fun stuff. That's a good <laughs> intro for our new neighbors. <laughs> yelling oh, in the street. The, we got new neighbors. Well, they've already been yelling in the street? No. No, no you guys were. Oh. <laughs> they were here yesterday. It was oh. our first night. <laughs> Fuck them. I came back today from LA and I saw the fucking dreaded U Haul. And then I saw two motorcycles and then a bicycle, which means we have bikers with children. <laughs> the Colorado plates, somehow that was soothing. Colorado. Not so bad, but bikes and kids. Just, you, the I I saw one of the dudes the other day, and he he just looked looked like uh, like Easy Rider had been left out in the sun too long, <laughs> <laughs> like, like all pruned up. Oh, good. That just, means maybe the kids are of age. That was Uncle Bill. <laughs> <laughs> I you know what? Every time Brian just sits there on his computer and looks up confused every now and again. <laughs> This is like when bingo, when I'm like, like a hardcore fucking trying to clean up for people, and she goes, I'm just going to take a nap right in the middle on the couch. That's what you are. <laughs> you're a drain on the energy. Not only are you not helping, I mean, you're I fucking feel, everybody else's yeah, rhythm up. Yeah. He, he, like, I'm sorry. Am I talking too loud at the library? <laughs> He's fact checking <laughs> in real time. There were audible silences. I was looking for material to fill it. <laughs> yeah. Is it in your computer? Yeah. You're sitting there in your fucking laptop? I have an app called Flipboard that's very good for that I have a, I have some notes. I, uh, oh. I I did a lot of stuff in New York where I was drunk, but uh, we already talked about David Feldman. That's not That all happening. went out. All right, good. Yeah. That's not happening this weekend. It will happen, and we'll probably get Levine and sh shit. That'll happen probably August. I don't know. Uh, but people have been emailing me. I'm so backed up in my fucking emails that, you know what? I'm probably not going to get back to you. Maybe I'll read it. But the last several weeks between book signing in L.A. and New York and then having to go back to L.A. for other shit. Yeah, I, I don't know. But I get a few saying, hey, can we come down? And, is there any way I can get a ticket to the David Feldman thing? And I'm like... Did we not address this? My life's been a little hinky lately. I'm not really focused. You you called me out for having the blurb that you sent me like on my phone. It's because I have like three emails from you over like eight years of knowing each other. <laughs> like three emails you've responded to to. And it's a total of like ten words in the over the three emails. Most of them are no. <laughs> <laughs> Also, to be fair, bear in mind, most of your, most, most of the inquiries you get on email are fucking, they're Google answers. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah we've covered that. You yeah. could Google this and not ask me. Yeah. Uh, so. Hey, you want to come to uh, Swanee, Connecticut to play uh, the fucking VIP lounge? Mm, no. No particular. That's or maybe I will, <laughs> but if I was looking for, I, uh, I'd find you. Did we read this one, Doug? This was the guy who uh, wanted you to, to play somewhere, and he, he listed the pros and cons. <laughs> I haven't heard of this. This is an actual letter. Handwritten letter from Mike Coughlin in Longboard, Illinois. That's already a no, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you remember? Was Go this ahead. before? I'm looking at my uh, notes. Yeah, he, <clears throat> he's a fan and wants <laughs> to invite you to perform a show for him. I currently live in a shitty basement, way to sweeten it, <laughs> with two dogs and a cat. Uh, I could probably provide an audience of about three. Oh, yeah. I mean, if I had a nickel for every offer that comes in like this, I'd have to forward right I, to Hennigan. I, I didn't read that on the air because I was tempted, because he's in Chicago. Yeah. And I was tempted to get Junior yeah. to do this. Yeah. I have no idea your rate. <laughs> well... 
if we sell out <laughs> <laughs> at three, there's a bonus at sell out. Just tell them it's like, you know, we have to send in a reconnaissance team like Junior to see how <laughs> what the audience is like. Uh, I have no idea what your rate is, but I'm sure we can come up with the $200 or so. Uh, you'll also get use of the cats. <laughs> I, I will take all of these shows. Wait. Mishka will work. Wait, the I shows. think that says caught. Hold on, I think that says caught. That changes it completely. Is it cat or caught? Come on, this is handwritten, dude. I I just assumed that was. Point cat. is, I just want to issue. I was, gonna, I was, I was just tell picturing him <laughs> using the cat versus using the caught. Like, I have a blanket acceptance for all of these. That's yeah, a fucking yeah. great gig for yeah, me. So <laughs> right and now, I don't think at Mishka Shubali, if you can spell it. If you can't, Google will correct you. S H U B A L Y Mishka, like it sounds. Yeah, he'll take gigs like that. I've I've played worse. <laughs> oh, it's Lombard, Illinois. Sorry. This yeah, you should have typed this, dude. <laughs> Pro go ahead. I I just saw the PS when you flipped it over. So wait till you get to that. <laughs> go skip to the PS. Uh, well, I got the pros for my proposal. You want me to read those real quick? Yeah. Sure. Uh, I live in Chicago. It's a good hub. Uh, number two, tying into number one, you get to earn miles. Uh, no other comedian has played there, so you'd be the first. Uh, I have pills and booze. That should be in the first sentence, by the way, if you really want. Uh, I'm pretty cool for 33 years old. For a 33 year old alcoholic with a failing law practice, I mentioned that to disguise myself from other people. I'm in. I am. I am important. Uh, I won't heckle you. But he doesn't. He offered three different versions of spelling heckle. Uh, I'll make sure no one records you. Cons, actually, those could have been the cons, except for the bills and bills and entire bills. letter is a con. Uh, cons. There's only two cons. I could I could be a crazy serial killer, insulting comedians to come over and killing them would be an an odd way to kill people, but it would also be unique. I guess everyone needs a gimmick. And number two, there are no other cons. This, this plan is an excellent one. Uh, handwritten. You get, he, he wants credit for handwriting a letter. P.S. I'd be cool with Chad Shank if you're too busy. <laughs> <laughs> I love that I'm not even the consolation prize. I'm like, yeah, I don't even have a talent. <laughs> for Mishka, it's a bringer show. <laughs> <laughs> I have to sell my own tickets to get use of one of the cats. <laughs> All right. I think we're going to take a break. <clears throat> Joby's making pizza. I desperately need to eat. I think I've eaten half a thing of lunch meat in the last five days with mustard. I don't know if that's a vegetable. Uh, so we're going to take a break, and then I'm going to decide if I can tell this story. But I, I'm going to. I know it. I know it already. L.A. story coming up next. I love that Bisbee was voted the number one small historic town in America by the USA Today. I just hate the fact that they don't have books here. Or music. Or meatloaf. What the fuck are you talking about? There's a place called Bisbee Books and Music in the fucking convention center mall. You fucking moronic shit gibbon. Uh, how can anyone miss it? It's, it's, there's only like three places to go in Bisbee and only two of them are worthwhile. There really are books? And music? What about meatloaf? It's next to a fucking restaurant called The Table, which none of us like to go to, but I'm sure it sells meatloaf to all the fucking paps who come here looking for some sort of healing experience that isn't as expensive as fucking Sedona, so, okay? So what you're telling me is we can get books... And music? And meatloaf? Yeah. All in one stop yeah. shopping? Yes, yes, yes! You can go there and get all that shite in the fucking convention center and then go back to the fucking Copper Queen and tell everyone you had a great time. And there's valet parking? No! What the, what the fuck? Valet parking? It's not the fucking Ivy, you <laughs> fucking turd monkey. No! There's no valet parking. You walk there like a normal human being, like Europeans, like pedestrians. So I bet there's no chance they have Doug Stanhope's digging up mother autographed at the Bisbee Books and Music. Of course they fucking have it. He's the only local celebrity. Everyone else is fucking dead or dying. Well, there we have it. I guess tomorrow we're going to race right out to get books, music, and meatloaf. 
Yeah, fucking do that! Support local businesses, you ungrateful wretches. Alright. Today's thank you start with a, uh... Uh, a postcard from Andrew Nelson, one of our own. He yeah. hasn't. Uh, I don't know if he's been actually on the podcast, Love but he's you, always Andrew. around. He, he's built a bunch of the shit around here at the Funhouse, and he just wanted to say quick uh, line to let you know that you are missed. Hi to Mishka. Wish I could be at the Royale show. Hi to all. That's from Andrew Nelson, who's nice. summering up in Astoria, I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, nice lady we met on the. Uh, Somewhere, we met her in New York at a sandwich place, Pret a Manger. I don't want to give him a plug. I only went there for bingo. <laughs> and she wrote a nice letter. Uh, thank you. I don't know even where this, the New York City cab driver's joke book, that might have been old. I don't know. Just found a bunch of shit. Chris something from Slidell, Louisiana, sent some uh, Bisbee Sticker? Killer Termite stickers with their own NOLA crew. Crew oh, as right. in uh, Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras, Mardi Gras crew. crew. And a nice. Saint's decal. There we go. Uh, and he That's said, an unauthorized reproduction, by the way, so let, I'll take his address. <laughs> he said, uh, <laughs> stand up, thanks for the referral to Dave McDougal, who's our real estate guy, because he's thinking about moving from New Orleans to Bisbee. And, uh, oh, <laughs> fuck. We, uh, anyway, yeah. <laughs> that's Chris. I can't read his handwriting. I got uh, all that stuff we just opened here. Uh, Chad got... Wow, Jesus Christ. Oh, Chad. no. Oh, no. Oh, Chad fuck. Shank. What the fuck? I got, hey, what, who, what, what enabler sent that to I, you? I got the bad news for society kit. <laughs> it, it says tactical ninja kit on there, but it, it has a, uh, a set of... <laughs> What's it say on the knuckles? Yeah. Oh, it says army. <laughs> brass knuckles that say it army. Has, they're, it's like a belt buckle, but they're brass knuckles. Because you, right. you can't have with brass the, with knuckles. the hand support. You can't have brass knuckles. That's a belt buckle. There's a uh, Chinese throwing star. <laughs> Can I say that without offending anybody? Tracy I'm not sure it, yeah. it's uh, Chinese or not, but it's an Oriental throwing star. Chances are it was made. They're in China. all made and? in America now. <laughs> and and? ripoffs and a uh, butterfly knife. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't need that toe. <laughs> he, was, he was flipping it around like a grand master a minute ago, and now he flips it out on the fucking podcast, and he almost takes Bingo's nipple off and loses a toe. <laughs> I used to buy these at the county fair when I was in junior high, so it's been a little while since I've flipped a butterfly knife around. Everyone used to buy that shit till you hit yourself in the nuts with nunchucks one time, and you go, eh, maybe I'll buy some art. <laughs> <laughs> what did you get, Bingo? What did you get ah, from that? It I was the it. yellow, the yellow Manila envelope. It's all from one person, uh, Marcus. Oh, so we're going with that, right? Well, now? Yeah. Uh, I got a. Um, oh no, it was the. I got. I got a holy Bible that we can sell, uh, resell on the road. We got. Yeah. If we thanked every fucking person who sent us a Bible, it'd be person. a whole podcast. Yeah, that's great. It's this, a painting this is, of Bingo. This is, this is a, um, a picture of me with my forged signature. It just looks like my my handwriting, and it's on a piece of leather. From it's not a picture. It's a it's, it's a paint a painting drawing or a painting. A, painting, a, painting a good one. Me. Yeah, and it's from at Queen of Outer Space. And that's I am outer spell outer space. Queen right? of O U T R S P C E. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you. That it's gorgeous. Love Maggie. Thank you, Maggie. Thank you so much. Mishka's uh, brought us uh, three paintings from his friend. Oh, uh, fart, uh, written queefing, down. queef fart Jed paintings. Collins, he's at Drunk Jed, and it's three uh, paintings in a series of... Uh, farting and queefing. Farting girls. This is, looks like And they look like bingo. And they look like bingo. They have turquoise hair and stuff. Yeah, and oh, blowing right. farts through Mainly because they're panties. farting, they look like bingo. <laughs> <laughs> Those will be going up in, in the uh, bathroom of the, choir, yeah. the quiet house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, can, what can do you I, got, Shaley? Uh, thank someone else. Yeah, but okay, we're going. I'll wait for Shaley. Oh, uh, well, the person brought, who sent oh, yeah, the yeah, tactical yeah. stuff and uh, my hat, my yingling hat. Uh, what else did they send? Well, it was Marcus, and then you jumped it with uh, yeah, where, Outer Space. Yeah, where was mine? I, did yeah. I open oh. mine? You must have. I walked in here, and you guys already started opening like Christmas, and I had to... Oh, Kenny got uh, something, too. Kenny got something? They sent Kenny something. Oh, yeah. Kenny, get a... What'd you get, Kenny? Take your time. 
I got a, a spinning bow tie, remote control activated, <laughs> which you will see coming soon. Oh, we're gonna re- we get the remote. You get the tie. We get the remote. <laughs> Check that for razor blades. <laughs> <laughs> What's hey, says check that for razor blades. Open that. You yeah. you there's this, a, a this guy and I I don't know if I uh, I had his name. Oh, it's written down. Uh Jeff Stoker sent uh he sent me an email saying, oh, I just sent you some drunk shit. Don't eat the uh magic berries. Don't you know? Miracle fruit tablets. Uh-oh. There's no explanation as to what they are. Like and they maybe, sound, you just, the description sounds like you should eat them. Experience something truly amazing. Emberry tablets transform ordinary food into the extraordinary. But, 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 turn your taste buds. He says, but he said, don't swallow them in the email. So, uh, yeah, this Trauma? is, Let's, this is going Trauma? right. Yeah. Uh, I, well, Doug, actually, just just probably, give just offer them to Bingo as a free sample. All right, healthy. Good bath salts. Good bath salts. Good spice. Uh-huh. And he also sent a uh, this a, a rubber mask. I don't yeah, even know uh, what it is. Yeah, let me. Open. I gotta get. Hey, you, you, oh, I got a knife. <laughs> Watch it. <laughs> Shit, that was good, dude. I, I was gonna say that Kenny's gonna be wearing that. Oh, in a that's second. another. Oh yeah, <laughs> my unicorn mask, bro. Uh, horse head rubber mask. Oh, yeah. Thank my you unicorn? for that. Nah. Uh, and what was the delicate thing, Chaley? Oh no, you got another one of these. We oh, we got a second one. I don't Ken- know if you were Kenny. here last time, Kenny. Uh, but someone sent us this porcelain. It's like a toilet bowl coffee cup with a a heart shaped poop stuffed mm-hmm. poop in it. We already got one of those on the last podcast, and someone oh, sent another. What a wine cup. I don't. Well, the, 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 whoever sent the last one went. Wow, that got there quick. <laughs> no, s- two of you sent it. Here, this is from this guy, well, Jeffrey. You, well, oh, I'll, I'll yeah. Yeah, it's a, a critter catcher. I don't. I was going to open this while you did this. It's a critter catcher, and it's. Uh, I tried to buy these when I first saw them online. It. Uh, I don't know how to describe it. Well, it's, well it's, it's Tracy. Something. What will not kill spiders, no. even though they're rampant around here in your house. So this is a thing you can pick up, gently pick up a uh, spider <laughs> with, and then gently yeah. set it outside. It's like one of those uh, uh, old people fucking long trigger thing yeah, like that you a, can pick grabber, stuff up. Like, like a grabber, grabber up yeah. top. But this has uh, soft bristles yeah. so you can humanely relocate. And Tracy, was, Tracy was out on the on the patio picking up individual ants with it. So it, it's, it actually works. All right, and Bingo has a letter. stepping on them. <laughs> well, I'm still getting... I'm still getting mail from people when I was uh, in the hospital, so that's that still returned. coming through. That got returned, and just people spilling their guts about mental illness, and I just I appreciate it so much. This last one I got was from Bob Billick, and it was just uh, so beautiful. So thanks, guys. I'm still getting the letters. Thank you. All right, Shaley, you're gonna close it out with that. Well, weird no, thing? well, you you got this. Here, hand this oh, down to yeah, Doug. Yeah, yeah. I give that to Chad. Well, no, you've already been through this. Oh. Why don't you do this? <clears throat> Here, I'll take it back. Sorry. That's all right. This is a book. I don't know who sent this, but it says, Hi, Doug. I thought this book could give your drink some added spunk. They enjoy your gift, Matthew Freak from the UK. And it's uh, it's... It's really more of a pamphlet, right? It's it's, it's, a, it's a thin it's a, book. It's a recipe guide to how to put semen in a cocktail. Well, I mean, yeah, pedestrian explanation would be how to put semen, but it's uh, it's semenology, Doug. It's it's a whole science. That's the name of the book. Semenology, the semen bartender's handbook. I could do that with breast milk, <laughs> and I did. That's... White Russians, anyone? When I could what? lactate from a medication? Oh, there's a story in the press today. Yep. Channel what? 12, this couple that are a uh, news team couple, like Anchorman on local Tucson, they got busted because they found cocaine in their baby's system. Oh, I heard about that, actually. Yeah. She breastfed after yeah, doing blow at a party. Don't worry, it wasn't KVOA and Jeff Beamish in the morning. It was Channel 12. Fuck Channel 12. She's hot. I'd drink some of her breast milk if I was sleeping. I won competition, <laughs> Stan Hope. <laughs> I prefer my uh, Monica Richards in the morning with their traffic reports. Anyway, uh, what else we got, Shaley? What do you get, Shaley? Uh, this is this is from this is from 
It's a podcast oh, this, oh, Christmas. Mikhail Spe- Spiak? Sp- Spika. Spika. Yeah. Uh, this is the first thing. And it's so weird because I don't know if we've mentioned that you have one of these kind of uh, bottle openers on the wall. Here's another one that got sent. Oh, nice. Oh, Fun house like bottle opener. Howdy, it's, it's like evil a, yeah. howdy doody. Yeah, it's like an evil howdy. And I guess he, he says he made it. I don't know if that means he painted it or he actually made it. But he, it's on a mounting board. If you That's put that fucking down. great. That's for you, Doug. That is great. This is... Fun. This is for Bingo. When I first okay. saw it, I thought, oh, it's just it's just one of those. But then you oh, look no. at it for a little bit. There's, it, okay. there's something going it's on there. It's a dildo. There. But there's like metal washers in it. Oh, uh, yeah. This is this is a dildo with... Looks like a game. <laughs> <laughs> like, like a pioneer no, puzzle. Look, I'm going to pull this out of the dildo here yeah. right now. That, like, that's never wow, been said on this podcast. Yeah, it's usually the opposite. <laughs> Pull that is dildo there, out of the thing. They're magnetic too, guys. What? What the you, fuck is this? All oh, about? you can get your IUD out. <laughs> yeah, get, get that's the IUD I can finally, kit. finally <laughs> take my IUD out. I thought it was like a, a oh healing dildo or some sort that's of a Bisbee strange, hippie thing. But I like it. Thanks, what, guys. Uh, yeah, well, put it in for Thanks, the rest guys. of the podcast. Yeah. It's weird that when we get. Uh, Marital aids that are unpackaged. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, had, I understand why that. He one had to is, show some hardware. But, up but there's, here. there's, there. That is hardly the the first five that we've gotten. Right, that, right. Yeah, unpackaged. We get a lot unpackaged. Right. Is that just packaging to help it keep its shape? Maybe I'm. I'm still trying to figure out. It's what like the a shoe horn. Of that <laughs> is. I do not. Uh, know. No, uh, a shoe tree. Shoe tree. To keep to keep yeah, the, the form. Yeah. yeah. A shoehorn helps you get your shoe on. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. All right, oh, it well. came with a shoehorn, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And uh, that is the thank yous. I'm sure I missed someone somewhere. Someone sent x-ray specs from old school. Doug, everyone on the podcast today receives a wonderful gift from Marcus. Their own uh, double pack of the original x-ray specs. Yeah. Uh, Marcus, thank you, sir. What a For most of our listeners, Christmas. they wouldn't remember the old school <laughs> Back of a comic book, x-ray specs that you believed worked till you bought them. All right, though, now we'll get back to the podcast after some weird uh, sound thing that Chaley will do. Like... Hey, if you're coming to Bisbee, and a lot of people tweet me that they are, if you're not a comic, I don't really pay that much attention. But if you are staying here, the rule still stands. If you're coming to Bisbee, Stay at the Shady Dell if it's available, and I will step away from my book and come have a beer with you. Even Ichabod says, yay, on the Shady Dell. The ShadyDell.com, the ShadyDell.com. It's a vintage trailer park. Trailer's done to the nines just like it's 1958. You're going to love it. I will come down. I'll have cocktails with you. I might, maybe we burn a steak. I don't know. But stay there. If you're in town and I'm in town, I will see you there. And now back to the podcast, already in drudgery. We have to interrupt this podcast in progress because there is a spider on the wall that is about to get caught with the spider catcher that someone sent. What kind of spider is it, Tracy? Wolf? House. <laughs> it, it's a small house spider. spider. A fun yeah. house spider. Oh. Oh. oh, she pissed it off. Get away. He's only pissed at this. Oh. Got it. Oh. It's on your leg. There you go, Trace. There we go. And she's setting it outside. Spider catcher works. Spider's been relocated. Spider catcher works. X-ray specs do not. Uh, X-ray specs failed the test. All right, let's get back to this podcast that was going so great, I hope. Hey, children. uh, I'm going back on the road, kind of. I'll be hosting, hosting, mind you, meaning uh, using you as a focus group while... Uh, Brett Erickson and Christine Levine carry the heavy load, uh, and we're going to be fucking off starting July 18th in El Paso at the comic strip, I assume? Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, then going up through Colorado and Montana. We can never find a fucking Wyoming gig. I know that this... He tripled us where we go from Fort Collins to Billings in a day. But you do have a night off then. You said I didn't have a night off. I changed it today. 
You changed it. Yeah. Good work. Yeah. yeah. They're pliable up there, yeah. those parts. Uh, okay, so yeah, uh, maybe if we find a Wyoming date. Anyway, That's the, true. the dates will be updated on the uh, website, dougstanhope.com, I believe it is. And... Uh, <laughs> I think that's going to run 10 days back yeah, it's basically, yeah, it's going to go, you know, it's going to be El Paso all the way up, Albuquerque, Colorado Springs, Fort Collins, up to three dates in, uh, like, Billings, Montana. Are we doing that three-day run again with yeah, the, yeah. those guys? Yeah, yeah. Those guys are Same cool. shit. Yeah, and then yeah. down through Idaho. We'll do, probably do some more stuff in Idaho, Boise. Maybe Flagstaff? Or Flagstaff, Flagstaff. I don't yeah. know. It's yeah. not filled in, but it'll be a couple of weeks yeah. starting July 18th with... Brett Erickson at Brett Not Brent and Christine Levine with a K at Christine Levine. Figure it out. Mm -hmm. And me. And uh, I want fucking Chad Shanks already smiling because he did this run last time. Oh. I, I want to have a second car, just <laughs> like a uh, slap shot, the movie where they had a bus, like the, 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 uh, the, for the away games, they had a tour bus of just people mooning. I want, I want, I want, uh, yeah. Like a support vehicle. <laughs> if we had enough time, I'd get a fucking tour bus and lose my ass on this just for the fun. And we might have enough time. We don't have a name for the tour. Uh, it's last time round, it was Dino something. Dino rides. Dinosaur rides. Yeah. Uh, uh, this time it's Doug Stanhope has to fucking get new material to bring to markets that actually produce, uh, yeah. income. We're not saying you're not important. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so if you come up with a tour name, tweet it at me, at Doug Stanhope, uh, for a tour of, of just us fucking off. Desperate so, measures. Desperate. I think you might have just come wow. up with it. Save your tweets. He should I, be in the meetings right. from now on. <laughs> he should write my fucking material so I don't have to go to Fort Collins. <laughs> but a bum but a bum uh, anyway, uh, that's that. And, uh, hey, you know that book I wrote? Yeah. Yeah, it's still for sale. I I forget to plug it. If you call yourself a fan and you've not bought that book, you're not a fan. You're dead to us. Yeah, you're you're an awful, awful person. And if you call yourself a fan and you've bought that book and you haven't given it a five-star review on Amazon, you're dead to us. Dead in our eyes. Yeah. What about you all those books they could buy for other people? Yeah, Signed well, yeah, from DougStanhope.com. Yeah, yeah. If Absolutely. You're, if you've bought this book, but you've also not bought a signed book from DougSanhope.com, you're dead to us. Yep. And the audio book? Don't even, don't even think about it. Yeah. Because the audio book is going to be uh, off the charts, weird and different with Chad Shank and I reading different parts and then podcasts with people that are in the book mixed in. You won't even... I, we'll find your name and yeah. put you on an 86 list. You'll be more dead to us than an Egypt air flight taking off from Turkey Airport. There you go. Oh! Ho, ho. We, have a, we have a kind of a record now for doing a podcast on the eve of a 50-plus killing. It was Orlando was our last podcast after the Orlando gay bar killing. Mm -hmm. That was, a, that was we, after a baseball game. Yep. Yeah. All we do is talk baseball and murder. Yeah, that was very interesting watching your tweets that day, thinking, how big is their bubble? <laughs> you know, like, how many people near them are in this bubble that no one is saying, hey, have you heard about what's happened? <laughs> yes. Like, nobody. Yeah, we live at the end of the fucking world. So, yeah, yeah we get news late, especially on Baseball Sunday. Yeah. This uh, Sunday, July 3rd, Killer Termites Day. Maybe I'll bring books with me. Yeah. Oh, that's a great idea. Maybe I'll bring my book Holy bag. monkeys! You sold books at the fucking merch stand at the baseball stadium? No. no. You don't want to take away from their sales. It's, this is their thing. You don't. We make it our thing by heckling. We might have a Suburban parked out front with the yeah. back gate open that yeah. has all the merch from Selling the them like knock-off knock Rolexes. <laughs> but you know what, here, you know what? Tweet uh, your ideas for the name of the tour and also better be better than some desperate unique measures. baseball heckles because I don't know the game. I'm just trying to pull shit out of my ass. And if we use your heckle, uh, we'll be drunk and forget to give you credit. Yeah. Guaranteed. And Guaranteed. now, <laughs> back to the podcast. <laughs> All right, let's get straight to the police beat with Chad Shank doing his diligent duty out there reporting 
Uh, yeah, the, the uh, uh, Istanbul bombing has not made the police beat yet. But what else do we have going on? Thanks, Doug. I appreciate you uh, assuming that I'm not shitting my pants while I'm out here performing this duty. <laughs> Irritable bowel syndrome. He's fighting through it on an in-depth with Chad Shank. Irritable bowels and how it's affected the police beat on an Sh- upcoming. Shitting at will. <laughs> a Hereford man asked a deputy to do a welfare check on his five-year-old daughter and tell her that dad loves her. See, you know what? Sometimes you have to call the cops to show that you love that person. Especially when methamphetamine is involved. Oh, Hereford, yeah. Are you insinuating there's a lot of methamphetamine in Hereford and not Bisbee? There's a lot of space between trailers out there is all I'm saying. Get on a mic. You can chime in. You know you're going to do it anyway. You filthy next week's police beat filthy uncut drunken Scotsman yelling from afar doesn't know how to get on a mic. Keep going. <laughs> what else you got, Chad? An ice chest and personal information from a home on Black Knob View. Oh wait, hold on. We have to have anytime there's. <laughs> I fucking van- skip the whole fucking section of words. <laughs> But I think that, I, I moved o- my head and the microphone blocked it out is that, what happened. That's okay. That's and how fucking Pearls works, E.E. E. Cummings. Ugh. <laughs> You'd know. An Any, ice chest. Hang on, hang oh, on. Right, anytime. Sorry. I think, I I, I think from now on, anytime that it's uh, a street we live on, oh. Van Dyke, Black Knob, or Hazard, you should pause on that so Chaley can put in a... The calls are coming from inside the house, kind of a, 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 a air raid siren, kind of. All right. So, uh, what, what, what do I do? I wave do my hands before no, I no, read no. that one. How do no, I no. signify that? When it's you a, when you read it. Oh, so when I get to knob, Black Knob View, then I pause. Just give it yeah. a, two beats, and then uh, yeah, I can figure it out. All right, behind the scenes. An ice chest and personal information were stolen from a home on Black Knob View. All right, and we're going to try it again. We're going to leave this in, but try it again. Black Knob View! Wait, wait, I don't have to make that sound. No, no, no. You're 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 confusing me. I I drink that last drink too fast. Van Dyke, (laughs) Black Knob View, or Hazard Street. Those are our streets. Well, I I know that. (laughs) Do you <laughs> do a uh, hey Doug do a uh, no throw it to throw it to Chad good idea too. Kenny but no throw it to Chad because all right starting over go ahead Chad what else is going on in the uh, uh, the uh, tough love town of Bisbee Doug an ice chest and personal information were stolen from a home on Black Knob View <laughs> go ahead hit it for fun. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> the way the way you the way you uh, describe that is pretty much sums up everything from the Ken Lorry think tank. Good idea, Kenny, but no. <laughs> <laughs> and black knob view. That's how, uh, uh, as though he just said black knob view. Let's all chime in. Black knob view. <laughs> While the owner stepped away for 15 minutes. All right. That I was the most the, awkward I, I fucking... I forgot the first part of the story. Yeah, that was horrible. <laughs> he stole an ice chest and personal information. Oh, so what we were doing was taking all the funny out of it. <laughs> I get what we... I didn't, you guys got to tell me what we're doing That's first. All right. That's all right. We can leave all of this in because we're obviously drunk and people enjoy that. I used to work for a really big company. <laughs> What, what else is going on? This guy's risking his fucking life to bring us this news, and you sit there mocking. I'm not mocking. All right, Chad. A woman was locked in the fence at the gym club suites and was yelling for help at 2 a.m. Mock that, bitch. 
<laughs> now, you're not calling the victim a bitch. You're not victim blaming wow. the woman who is locked in no, a No, I'm fence. speaking generally to everybody who is listening, including the victim. <laughs> <laughs> So you are victim blaming? Well, maybe I'm not sure what that is. I'm, <laughs> just, like audio. I'm, just, an, I'm just an asshole, Doug. I don't like to put labels on it. When you say locked in a fence, I picture her like her dress got caught in a fence and she's scrambling. Yeah, her her little feet are just an inch above the ground, going. <laughs> little, 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 I'm locked in a fence. I don't know how. I think that description. We need well, Officer was, Bob friendly yeah, it was here. more to the inadequacies of the dis- of the description department at the Bisbee Police Beat. And now, Chad. <laughs> Go ahead, Chad. A caller from the hospital wanted to go to jail. And that just shows you how bad hospital food is. <laughs> Kenny's pointing at himself and going, not me. <laughs> Bizarre. <laughs> actual calls to the actual... I wonder how many people have subscribed to the Bisbee Observer to see that these are actual... The Bisbee Observer... Uh, There's a subscription uh, information right there. Well, you good. You know what? They can fucking Google it because yeah. I'm not finding my reading glasses. <laughs> this is the only Bisbee Observer. Chad Shank... Get back to serious business. Doug, once again, closer to home. A strange smell lingered on Black Knob View. Black Black Knob Knob View! View! (laughs) Chaley! That's, and that was the entire call. There's a strange smell lingering. Click. I did catch a mouse that, that, uh, was caught in a trap the day before we left, or the day we left, for a five-day trip. <laughs> we came home, it didn't smell so Did good. we ever talk about rescuing the mouse on the podcast? Uh, not this one. No. We, there, we had a mouse in the washing machine, and it went underneath the tubulator thing, whatever, the agitator. It, exactly. Tubulator. Very good. Yeah. It's, a, it's a top-load washer. <laughs> And yeah. Tracy came in and said, I think there's a lizard in the, uh, in the <laughs> I think there's, girls aren't good with science. I think yeah, there's yeah, a lizard. <laughs> I think there's a lizard in the washing machine. <laughs> so I all run out in the middle of the night drunk with our miners lights on our fucking helmets. Uh, that's not true. Stacy's give, sorry, Tracy's giving you a fuck you face, by the oh, way. No, that was I hope so. No, I know. No, oh, she's I'm... passing it around the room, or she <laughs> will. <laughs> so we all rush out there, and we find that it's a mouse. Where? In the washing machine, but it keeps running under the agitators, but its, it's, it's tail would come out. So we thought if we start a load of laundry, it will float out. Float up. No, now we're just drowning this fucking thing. Well... But Chaley well, figures out thing. that if we spin the agitator by hand really fast, the thing comes out with centrifugal force, at least enough so you can see the tail. So we're playing this kind of whack-a-mole game <laughs> where you spin it, I try to grab the tail, and then we save this very wet, choking. I don't think we. Do had you to realize give it the degrees of terror that mouth, mouse went through? Like it, it was bad already, and then it gets centrifuged. And then it gets drowned, and then people are trying to tweak his tail. Yeah, Guantanamo. I miss all the fun stuff around here. (laughs) It was either that or Meatwig, so uh, he got off light. We were going to throw Meatwig in the washing machine (laughs) and just see who wins. (laughs) And run a delicate cycle, because Meatwig could use it. (laughs) (laughs) Two warriors enter. One man leaves. One Meatwig comes out. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Uh, what do you? What else do you have? <laughs> hey, you know what? We oh. don't. Mi- we 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 try not to make light of serious situations. But uh, sorry, back to you, Chad. Oh, are we still doing this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Two patients were involved in a physical altercation in the parking lot on Arizona Street. Later. <laughs> we don't live I was, on Arizona. I was on the fence on that one too, Bingo. It wasn't just you. I, I, that was close enough. Sorry. Later, it was noted. 
Later, it was noted it was not a physical confrontation. They were just a little upset. Is that the guys on the corner next to the Stanhope store that yeah. drink in tank oh, tops God. every time I drive by? They live above the, oh, the store. I would yeah. imagine that. That's was, not a hotel. They no, no, no. This was a, uh, two patients. So yeah, it had, I, it it had referred to, to them as patients. That's yep. why I thought it was those guys. It had guys. to be Chiricahua Health Center across from the corner store where the mayor smokes cigarettes a block away from where you're talking about. <laughs> what else, Chad? <laughs> I, I know there's going to be happy news at the end of this. Finally, a grandmother on Hazard Street. Hazard Street! Finger man! <laughs> believed her grandson had a knife that could be turned into a pistol. You know what? Don't cry conspiracy theory right away. There could be knives that get turned into pistols. <laughs> In a Donald Trump presidency, the use of the use of the word pistol is interesting. I feel there's also hallucinogens rampant on Hazard Street. That might have something to do with it. <laughs> that might be the lingering smell from Black Knob View. Black Knob View, and we'll view you next week on the Doug Stanhope Podcast. Thank you, Chad Shank. Thank you, Brian Hennigan. Thank you, Mishka Shibali. Thank you, Joby, uh, for making pizzas. Thanks, Bingo and Tracy, for making drinks. Thanks, Chad Ch- Ch- Chaley. Chad Chaley. Ch- Chad Chad A new, new guest on the show. Kenny, thank <laughs> you for uh, just being here. And you'll still be the goddamn mayor, even if it's only for the funhouse. See you next time. Joby kicking out the pizzas. Joby, enjoy it. If you saw the thing where Johnny came out and interrupted the guy on stage at the comedy store, that kid was... What? (laughs) What? You don't know about this? No. What happened? Oh. We went to the comedy store to I see saw the Morgan picture. Murphy. Oh. One picture. Oh. Ryan Adams is a, a, a musician, musician, big fan of Morgan Murphy, as am I and a lot of most every comic. So he called up and said, hey, you want to come down to the comedy store to see Morgan Murphy? And Johnny says, do you know this guy named Morgan Murphy? I don't know. It's a chick. But yeah, let's definitely go. So we went down and they watched the show. And the Brechels hooked us up in the green room. Kerry was working, Kerry Mitchell's. So she set up the main room backstage, and uh, Brett came down and made sure all shit went smoothly. And uh, then they watch her. They come back. We have a little bit of a you know after event in the green room and meet and greet kind of shit. And then we're leaving, but Brody Stevens is going on last on Saturday night. And I'm like, you got to see at least a, a, a couple minutes of Brody Stevens because he's this monster, insane genius. <laughs> and I'm trying to explain to him, but I'm like, you just got to see it. And there's this guy that's still on before him. And he made some reference. We're like right in the wings of the main stage. Main room? Yeah. And he said, did I do my time? Did I get the light already? And I'm like, go out there and tell him he's done. And he, should I do it? Should I do it? Like, fuck yeah, you should do it. So he just walks out. <clears throat> two fucking roars of applause. Of and course. Went, Your time's up. Your time's up. <laughs> and the kid is shitting his pants. <laughs> he says, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to do 15 minutes. He goes, you got one more minute. Walks back. <laughs> <laughs> and the kid wraps up very quickly. Well, I guess Johnny Depp told me to get off stage. I don't remember exactly the verbiage, but then uh, I think I, I went out for some reason. Anyway, uh, then Johnny introduced Brody Stevens. Here's Brody Stevens. Enjoy it. It was fucking great. <laughs> nice. Uh, was that on a Periscope or something? How would I no, have seen that? No, it was on T. I won't. I don't oh, they, mention their name. It's in the fucking tabloid. Oh, got picked up by the tabloids. Shit. Oh, kind of, yeah. Obviously, the current comedy store are kind of <laughs> squeamish about people getting their cameras out. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, so I wondered why I would have known that. Picture that I just, got taken. Yeah, 
where the kid is just, just staring up dumbstruck into the lights. <laughs> Johnny's giving him the, hey, fuck you, get off stage thing. <laughs> it's wicked funny. And yeah, maybe that guy is going to you know, be a monster in comedy. I don't know. I didn't watch his act, but he'll he'll tell that fucking story forever. <laughs> uh, otherwise, in L.A., all right, here's a story that I have a, a friend of mine that's she's saying don't say it. It's a funny <laughs> story. It's a sweet story. Yeah. It's just and she's in rehab. She won't hear it. Uh so she's in rehab and uh I've been texting her a lot over the course of weeks trying to keep supportive and whatnot and hey come visit me and I'm I'm a long ways away. You're in LA and just open the door. Oh, she's barking for food. Sorry. She I was saying, was just don't say out. your friend's name. That's all she was saying. Oh, reminding you once again. Yeah. You got it's close. Just, it's just a friend of mine. Yeah. yeah. So I wouldn't say her name regardless. <laughs> uh, so I was texting her, and at one point a couple weeks ago, she said, I, 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 I've been shitting my pants. I just, it's like my asshole just won't tell me when I have to shit. I'm shit my pants a lot. So I told her this story that I'm sure we've told before on the podcast about the time Chaley and Bingo and I were leaving some hotel room and my prerogative was playing. It was uh, the Lakeshore Theater. We were at the hotel after the Lakeshore Theater show. The weird part is, how was my prerogative by Bobby Brown playing inside the room? That's the part that doesn't make sense. No, I, I think either it was on the TV or the door might have been open because we had a cart. Maybe, yeah. It might, might yeah. have been a commercial. Either way, I'm trying to fart to every beat of It's early. My, it's it's, it's, it's hungover morning. I can do what I want to do. And on the fourth beat, I drew mud. And it delayed our departure by a change of clothes. All right, hang on. Uh, so I told her that story. Hold on. The best part was you stripped off the the soiled drawers and you threw them on someone else's door in the hallway. And then we left. <laughs> well, this is kind of this is kind of where this ends up. Oh. <laughs> Well, we go back with the texting, and she goes, it's not like shit, and she's describing the shit, and then I'm trying to make it into funny terms. I should have pulled this up on my fucking text. <laughs> but uh, there's a lot of pants-shitting talk going on for a while. So I end up, I have to go to L.A. last minute for some weird shit, and uh, so now I can visit her. So I go up to visit her. Whatever the attendant person, the... Uh, I, I uh, can't remember that douchebag from Celebrity Rehab, the woman with the glasses, that woman, that type of woman, Check brings him. me in. I sign in. She goes, um, okay, you smell like alcohol. And I go, well, that's 19 hours old. <laughs> this was after the fucking yeah, yeah. shoot yes. thing. We, uh, and I... I, I that's how drunk I had been the day before. If I still smell like alcohol, she's like, it's okay. Um, I told her if you were stumbling or swaying, I wouldn't let you in, but I'm going to bring you in the back way because you smell like alcohol and that could be a trigger for people, uh, whatever. So I, I guess well, it's, it's like, sorry, it's, it's like you're a scene from the walking dead where you're walking through zombies. <laughs> and it keeps going. <laughs> Well, she had texted me after all the shit talk. She goes, oh, you're really coming? Oh, that's so great. I saved my shitty panties for you, <laughs> which I think is a joke. <laughs> so so I get in there, and she's like, oh, I'm so glad to see you. I didn't want to die without seeing you. You're not going to die. You're doing fine. You're... You're well into this at this point. She goes, I saved those shitty panties you wanted. <laughs> you and I went, I didn't ever ask you to save me shitty panties. And she's like this far from my face where I said, if you keep talking this close, I'm going to need reading glasses. She's like, but I thought it was your fetish. Oh. And I thought if I save them, maybe this is the only way you'll come visit me. And I go, if, if I did say that, because you know, sometimes I 
yeah, trying to make drunk it funny. text, a joke. And I go, maybe I made a joke about that. Well, maybe you did, but I saved them just so you'd visit me. I thought it was your fetish. And she was so genuine that she thought this might be a fetish and so accepting of that fetish that she saved shitty underwear for weeks. And then I went through all my text messages. I never made any joke, any anything that you could even... Not even infer just, that just, you were Yeah, I was just making up fan. names for types of poops and stuff. But she's, you know, it's just rehab. The people are there for a reason. A little, a little was, spa- it, was it just the one pair? No, she said <laughs> pairs, plural. I didn't oh ask her God. how many. I might have said this on the last podcast, but... <laughs> <laughs> but, but then, then I'm back. On, I, I'm, it was the morning I was leaving. Johnny has like 85 houses on this one street, so I'm staying in one of them. And uh, I'm wearing fucking pajama pants. No underwear. Fucking stroll downstairs, eat my lunch meat, <laughs> have a bullet and Coke for breakfast. <laughs> Go to the pisser. And I, 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 I like to sit to pee, and it would have helped that day. But that day I stood because I'd been holding that piss till like 1 o'clock in the afternoon, sitting in bed. I don't want to get up. So that's when your prostate gets welded shut. You've been holding a piss for so long that you have to piss, but you still have to force it because it's been... Jumpstart it. You got to get it. Yeah. Yeah. So I forced it and I sharded my pajama pants. (laughs) And then I go, like, you have to go through what, what is the protocol? If you shart, like, I can't... In that short story with Bobby Brown, I left it on someone else's hotel door. <laughs> I like, I'm the only guy staying in this house. I don't want to throw away my favorite pajama pants. I don't not. That was one of the things I wanted to do so badly while I was there. But uh, is just the laundry has to exist, but it's probably in some secret hideaway. There's no laundry present. All, everything that's present is art and cool shit. It's like behind a painting. Would there's have, a dumb way. That would imply yeah. uncleanliness. <laughs> so, well, I would have to call him and go, "Hey, where's your laundry at?" <laughs> Even though it's obvious, I have not changed my clothes in four days. <laughs> hey, where's your laundry at? And then I thought, there's no way he knows where the laundry is anywhere he lives. So I wanted to play stump the Johnny. <laughs> And just keep calling and saying, hey, how does this printer work? <laughs> What's the password? How's the dishwasher work? How's the coffee make? Because he would have no idea. And that last fucking hour I spent, I don't know if we said this on the podcast yeah, or off. No, we were talking before. We were off. Yeah. yeah, the last hour I spent was talking to his uh, main housekeeping lady who's been with him for 30 years. And I was telling her about Stump the Johnny, and she was fucking dying, even though she <laughs> barely speaks English. Oh, she knows. She was yeah, just she hoping knows. you didn't hand over your shitty pajama pants. <laughs> well, I go, do I, do, do I, I leave them in the trash? Because it would be like the only, obviously, or do I, because I don't want to lose my pajama pants. Do I just get drunk and then be honest and go, hey, I sharded my pajamas, but I want to keep them. Where's Why your laundry? Why would you just throw them in the shower and take a shower? Because I was leaving that day. Well, also, yeah. Also, he doesn't know how to work the shower. <laughs> <laughs> That's what started to stump the Johnnies. I stood outside that sh- shower fiddling with all the fucking knobs for like 15 minutes. You, to- <laughs> you really didn't know how to turn on water? I Yeah, cold. <laughs> I got cold. I finally got it going. Well, you don't want to bleed those colors in your pajama pants. Well, I, I know what I would have done, but what did you do? Found a laundry bag. That's why Brian and I always grab the laundry yeah. bag out of hotel rooms. Yeah. I had one in my backpack, so I still have sharded pajama oh. pants in my luggage. That's why I just panicked earlier when we were talking about something else. I went, oh, shit, I got to fucking unpack. <laughs> Or throw away a suitcase. By the way, just on that point, 
best laundry bags I've probably ever had, the Parker Meridian in New York. Ooh. Yeah. And also, I got Chile uh, a Bible from the Parker Meridian. So I think that should command top-notch pricing. Well, it would if if I said that one's from the Parker Meridian, about 80 of them we have look like they're from the Parker yeah, Meridian. so just sell them all as being from the Parker Absolutely. Meridian. <laughs> Like and uh, yeah, you, well, we're going to have that eBay yard sale. Maybe I'll s- sell my sharded. Uh, S- still in the bag. I told you my story about my friend Alan, didn't I? Uh, is it a pants shitting story? Because we it's, love it's, to it's, close it's, on It's them. a bed shitting story. <laughs> so uh, well, you just gave away the punchline. No, 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 that's not the punchline. Go ahead. So my friend Alan was at this part. Uh, uh, that's his real name. Uh, he uh, he was at this, this sort of exclusive, like some sort of country side wait i'm still hung up on brian has friends yeah that's, <laughs> that was, that's suspect it's confusing to me i thought brian hated every human being that existed well and maybe here, it's just I, us I, I, what's what's annoying about that though is that doug had told me that chad never goes for the odd face joke but uh <laughs> <laughs> so um maybe I, it's because brian always uses the person's real name when he t- talks about them shitting the bed <laughs> go ahead his career is almost done so anyway, uh, Alan is <laughs> Alan is uh, staying at this. Uh, thanks, hey, your phone's ringing. English, Just kidding. English countryside fucking place, and it's a fairly big epic party overnight. Whatever. He wakes up in the morning in this like large double bed, and he shat right in the middle of the bed. So he, what he thinks is, oh, I'll just get out of here. I'll, I'll just. Because he he'd been he stayed in the house for the whole weekend, so he knew there was that their laundry is a posh country house was in, in the basement. So he thought. Let's go downstairs, and I'll and I'll you know stick this in the laundry, and and then that's it, and nobody will know it's me or whatever. Throw it in with everyone else's. Yeah, yeah. 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 So he's he he's carrying you know like a so you know the hobo nap knapsack you know because it's a big meaty turd. It's not like it's not like diarrhea. <laughs> so he's he's carrying it like sort of you know something he's going to hurl at Goliath. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> And and he gets down to the Wait, basement. He didn't even lift the giant turd off and throw it in the toilet. He's just gonna throw it in the washing yeah, machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like this guy. Yeah. So <laughs> Alan's like walking along the this, this, the basement corridor with this in his hand, and he arrives in the laundry room, and uh, his friend's father is just standing there doing the laundry. This is like six in the morning, and they look at him, and Alan's holding this thing, and Alan just goes. Here you are. And then, <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then and then literally runs all the way for like you know to, to the nearest village to try and get up try and get a bus to leave. Like like it's in the middle of nowhere. His only his only recourse was literally to flee. <laughs> you know, you know there's, there's no coming back from handing the master of the house. A fucking turd wrapped in his delicate linen. You know? <laughs> you, know you can't pass that off. It's like, it's like the opposite of a dine and dash. <laughs> dro- drop all four mics. <laughs> Obviously, my friend Alan isn't the one who works for um, Citibank. <laughs> <laughs> or the one that'll be calling anytime soon to say Merry Christmas. <laughs> uh, all right, more pants shitting. Every every episode we can get pants shitting in. Oh, hang on. Hang Just on. when you thought this podcast Pant was shitting done. for the bleachers. <laughs> Mishka Shibali. I uh this is Shibali. Back in the good old days when I used to be fun. I uh when I was living out of the van, I uh, I played in Vegas at some fucking shitty strip mall club. Wait, don't Double you still down? out of your van? Well, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I mean, when I used to have fun oh. living out of the van. <laughs> and somebody gave me a bunch of uh, muscle relaxants, and I'd just been living off of, like, PBR. So I took all the, you know, whatever the muscle relaxants were, and... and they were I, I can, poppers. I remember it now that I was, like, mid-song, and I, I farted, and I was like... Ooh. Was that a was that a wet one or but I mean when you're up there you just got sweaty you just got to keep going yeah and then I was I was walking around afterwards and I was like no 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 it's totally fine and uh, 
So then I got, you know, I drank away the $11 I made or whatever. <laughs> and uh, the next morning I fucking, I woke up in, uh, woke up in the van and I was like, oh my God, I got to fucking go so bad. And I, I like rolled over to, <laughs> to get out of, uh, to get out of the van and you know how, like, uh, if the if you're, squeal of a twelve-year-old girl when you're rolling over her in a van, <laughs> you shit on me. They, they don't squeal when they're unconscious, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, you know when your your pants are like too tight and your pubes get caught, and yep. you can feel that like little tug. I felt that in my asshole, and <laughs> it's that I had sharded on stage, had forgotten to deal with it, and then it had like welded all my ass hair. <laughs> <laughs> into like this dreadlock of uh, shit and ass hair, and uh, so then I, I waking up in the uh, waking up in the van, I, I had to fucking I was like, am I gonna puke? Am I gonna shit my pants? And I there was like a Target close by or something, so I went into uh, I sort of waddled into the Target with uh, you know with it just like tugging at my ass the whole time, and I had to, which of course gives you a boner. <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, I, I was able to find a bathroom there, but before I could even take a shit, I had to like reach down and grab that cargo net, <laughs> dried uh, feces and ass hair, and rip it out, like, like waxing my own butthole. It's like an organic butt plug. <laughs> like, uh, new peanut butter. You gotta peel off the. <laughs> you gotta get an edge first. You, know, you gotta peel off the, yeah, yeah, the, the top, the, the top. seal. Yeah. But you got to get your nail under there to get that edge. And then you can feel it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this week's uh, podcast sponsored by Target. <laughs> Use whatever bathroom you want. Target. I hope that's not a transgendered person peeling dried shit off of his asshole. Uh, how so offensive would that be? Take a new shit. <laughs> Is that a fruit roll-up? <laughs> Not fruit. <laughs> Half right. It's like it's pulling a... out the dried wet nap that <laughs> hangs out the top to get to the next wet nap. It's a turd jerky. <laughs> turd jerky. I don't know if that's a song or a band name. All right. I don't think I have anything left. It's going to get weirder over the weekend. Becker's coming in. Brechels are coming Brechel. in. <laughs> July 1st. Christine Levine is coming in. Mishka's already here. Joby, how long? Another week and a half. Another week and a half for Joby. All my favorite people here. Bingo's going to be... Do you have a name for your band, Bingo? No, we're working on it. Working on... Okay. Turd Jerky. Jerky. <laughs> Turd Jerky. Turd <laughs> Jerky. Yeah. Uh, 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 Haze of Anal. No one's taken, no one's that, taken one that one yet. <laughs> one of my favorite podcasts ever. That was two. Number, it was, that was no, on the way back it? from this tour. The same For, tour I mean, we're doing. Tour oh, yeah. we're, that we're was repeating. my first podcast ever. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah the fucking Haze of Anal. Yep. Uh, what's a uh, Pillow Talk podcast? Yeah. Same. I was in a full, I was in my, my yeah, show well, Bingo's suit. Bingo's sister. Show suit Bongo. in bed with uh, Bongo Bingoman and uh, <laughs> yep. Doug. We talked about anal. Yeah, a lot of anal. All right, let's wrap this up. I'm tired. Tired. Anything else in your notes? Uh, we already read the dates during the commercials, so. Oh, those, you know what you Those are do? all on the site. And, and uh, maybe you'll do this or cut this out, but there should be a podcast, a podcast at Doug Stanhope that goes to you, so I don't have to forward all the shit that comes to me to go to you. Oh, and that's we'll we'll have to do it next time. Coming up on the the next probably million podcasts will be the segment Letters to Doug to Johnny. Because <laughs> all these fucking crazy fuckers that are sending me emails to pass on to Johnny. We're gonna uh, you know, collect up the the best shortest ones, most of them nineteen <laughs> pages fucking long. Don't, don't open with mine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that's uh, that's about it. 
Hey, Killer Termites, congratulations. Celebrate Sunday, July 3rd. If you cannot be here for the baseball games, celebrate at home because you have a, 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 an official date. What, what do you call oh, that? Bisbee, Proclamation. Yeah, of, Bisbee has, has deemed it a, uh, yeah. a date on their calendar. Yes. Bis, Killer Termites Killer Day. Killer Termites Day is official on some city ledger in some small town at some city council, and it was all about you. Can I uh, pick an outro song? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> How about, uh, this is uh, Decaying with the Boys by Every Time I Die. I'll be on uh, Warp Tour in July with uh, my friend Keith from Every Time I Die. There you go. Enjoy it. Everyone be quiet for it. Just want to get a little room tone. Quiet, everyone. The only helicopter ever in Bisbee. But see, if you're quiet, it will remove it. All right, here we go. Oh, fuck it. <laughs>